Hello Lagos. I'm really honored to be welcome today to be a keynote speaker on the AI uh, Saturday session in Lagos. Uh, it's a great privilege and I'm really honored. Today we'll uh, I'll share with you the basics of uh, bioinformatics from a data scientist uh, perspective. My name is Dina and uh, I'm based in Arusha, Tanzania at the Nelson Mandela African Institution of Science and Technology. Uh, bioinformatics is um, not a new field, but, uh, from, but it's really gaining, uh, it's really gaining uh, speed now and, uh, as the demand is really growing. It's basically a field of science in which biology computer science and information technology merge to form a single discipline and uh, it basically deals with uh, a story uh, retrieving and analyzing large amounts of biological information so therefore the source of data is uh, biological data is highly interdisciplinary and uh, the main goal is to enable the discovery of uh, biological insights as well as to create a global perspective which uh, unifying principles in biology can be discerned. Now how does a data scientist come into play? Biologists don't know, bio don't, don't know data science and data scientists don't know biology. That's why it really gives that uh, need for, 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 for these two fields to, to work uh, in an interdisciplinary manner. From a data uh, science perspective, you, uh, computer scientists who work with biologists is uh, basically referred to as computational biology. And uh, computational biology deals mainly with the computational part of uh, of the bioinformatics, and uh, it basically means uh, using the techniques from applied mathematics, informatics, statistics, and computer science to solve biological problems. So, and on every aspect here, we end up saying the the main uh, the basis is working on biological data, and some of the part some of the key topics that computational biologists work on is mainly developing tools that allow for multiple sequence alignment, identification of functional regions, uh, classification of data, is biological data, phylogenetics uh, analysis which deals with, uh, uh, phylogenetics deals with uh, finding the origin from the ancestors using uh, using biological data, using DNA. Molecular structure determination that deals with proteins. Genetics, okay, and diagnostics of and medical applications. And uh, computational biology is highly interchangeable with bioinformatics in uh, literature. So basically now why does bioinformatics now become a hot cake? Why does it become a buzzword? It's because mainly of uh, highly revolutionary uh, molecular biology methods for DNA sequencing and uh, protein structure determination, drug design and development. Now all this highly happens not on the wet lab but on the dry lab. When we say dry lab, it means using data. So a lot of these work currently now happen uh, using computational work, computational tools. Therefore, there has been an exponential growth of biological information, and therefore there's a high need requirement for database uh, storage of the biological data, organization of the information, and there's a high demand for tools for analysis of data. Now, whose work is it to do all the, these three tasks if it's not a data scientist or a database engineer, okay? So that's why there's such a high demand and that's my aim today to expose you to what 
opportunities are out there, what challenges are out there for you to have a wider view of where you can apply your knowledge in AI and machine learning. So the world now, there's a high transition of biology from the wet lab to dry lab. It's biology is highly data driven currently. And, uh, and the bioinformatics is very important uh, from the fact that the modeling uh, hap that happens through bioinformatics may provide answers to questions related to human health and evolution. However, I uh, just want to get this uh, concept clear that you shouldn't be misinformed that uh, with, uh, with bioinformatics there won't be a need to the wet lab. Everything starts in the wet lab, in the laboratory, and it ends up in the laboratory. Bioinformatics is the intermediate, which allows to, sp to, to really shorten the time and cost for doing the work in the laboratory. Because if you are given data for, uh, you are given the data, you can definitely, through modeling, provide some answers, which can be now validated in the lab. So it really shortens that span that time and resources that are required to use in the wet lab. Novel discoveries for healthcare, agriculture, food security is all enabled through bioinformatics. Now we have all these improved seeds, the GMO, genetic modified, uh, genetic modified seeds, all that is a result of bioinformatics. Disease surveillance and response is allowed for using bioinformatics work and management of health data you have heard of precision medicine personalized medicine that's what that's where the world is going based on your dna you'll be able to to to, to monitor your health okay your health records can be maintained but all that is data so it's a concept where we say data saves lives and uh, as I said earlier, there has been an exponential growth in biological data. The DNA sequence continues to grow tremendously. You can see here the recorded growth uh, over years from the 2000 and what is pro predicted uh, in 2025. Currently, this is where the capacity for the data, okay? Imagine how should your database be to be able to to accommodate this is a uh, one petabyte it was one petabyte around 2015 around currently but now data is growing in the petabyte you know terabyte it was terabyte back in 2010 that terabyte is huge right one to the 10 power uh, 12 petabyte 15 okay and uh, now it's going to exabyte and projected that by 2025 20, it will be in the size of zettabyte how should the database be designed how should how uh, the computational power that is required to analyze this data so we see that Moore's law has been overcome Okay, the growth of the bioinformatics data, biological data, surpasses Moore's law. Okay, the data doubles every year. Okay, and uh, other historical growth rate, uh, it says it doubles every seven months. Now, how, how can the storage be? How can the computational work be carried out? You see, those, for a data scientist, that's the that's now the, the playing field, that's the kind of big data that you'll be dealing, you are supposed to be dealing with. How, that means the algorithms that were you dealt with in the year 2000 will not be able to scale to work in, a, in this era of where we have such huge data. That's where your knowledge in AI, deep learning, machine learning comes into play. So we can see here the, 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 the biggest buzz even on the, on the journals is the big data versus the big C, okay? The torrents of data flowing out of cancer research and treatment are yielding fresh insight into the disease. So bioinformatics deals now with the, that analytics to be able to produce uh, 
insights. But there are big data challenges. There are challenges on big data when it comes to biological data, which doubles every year. Okay? How do you sustain the big data ecosystem in the biology domain? Organizing and accessing biomedical big data uh, will require quite different business models. That's what it says. Okay? So, biological data is big data. We can see now one of the uh, biggest uh, centers of excellence in bio, bioinformatics, the European Bioinformatics Institute, had a disk space of 75 petabytes that was back in 2015. Okay, and you can see now this inform uh, this growth really doubling and surpassing the Moore's law. Okay, and uh, the users who simultaneously access these databases are equally growing exponentially. So, to get a feeling of how big this data is, you see how big it is. The number of publicly available bases in the NCBI sequence reader archive as of July 2018, that is. Uh, equivalent to 6, 6, 6.1 million human genome and one human uh, for, for a, a human genome has a size of uh, 3 billion that are base pairs and the thing the high uh, the great motivation of uh, working in bioinformatics field is this fact that this big data huge like this is publicly available that's the really great opportunity that is out there for one to work in this field. That imagine all this amount of data is freely available for you to work. And these, um, these uh, bioinformatics centers of excellence receive 30 terabytes of data daily. Okay? They, so, and the greatest part of it is that it is all publicly available. And uh, these, there are three in the world, the three uh, bioinformatics centers of excellence. There are few worldwide, and they have a huge responsibility to collect, catalog, and provide open access to published biological data. And uh, among the centers, we have the European Bioinformatics U Institute, and uh, the NCBI, the National Center for Biotechnology Information in the US, and uh, the National Institute of Genetics in Japan. And these, they receive data, they have a very strict and well-structured criteria for receiving the data, the biological data. They receive it from around the world, okay? Archive it, they classify it, and share it with uh, other data providers, and uh, there are others who do analytics on the data, and uh, they provide the tools uh, to help researchers use it. So all these uh, points here highlighted, that's where the opportunity of a data scientist is required. And these institutions daily announce job opportunities which are out there for people to help and do all this work of doing the classification. That is all machine learning tools required and skills to be able to do this work. And opportunities are there and uh, that's where you can really um, invest on. It's one area that you can really invest on and gain your knowledge in okay and um, as i said earlier the data is growing exponentially and the challenges are on acquisition okay storage analysis and distribution here the the data in the biological domain the genomics data is compared with other with the other uh generators of big data in the world, astronomical data, the satellite images, okay, Twitter, YouTube, okay, they are compared to the genomics data. We can see the astronomy data has 25 zettabytes per year. In the genomics is one zettabyte per year. Twitter is zero to 
0 0.5 to 15 billion tweets a year, YouTube 500 to 900 million hours per year. The storage required now for astronomy data, the storage is one exabyte per year, okay? And, uh, but you can see the requirements for Twitter is a petabyte. YouTube is a one to two exabyte. But when you come to biological data, it goes to two to 40 exabyte data by uh, exabytes by year. So how does the storage be handled? Okay. What does a data scientist have to say? What does a data scientist have to do? So it's really a challenge, but at the same time, an opportunity. How do you? How is the data being analyzed? Okay, and uh, distribution. How do you? Uh, how do you distribute the data? So you can see now here is really how it is compared with other huge uh, generators of data. Uh, so we, it's a challenge, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for a data scientist to venture on to addressing these challenges. So uh, the life sciences have become increasingly data driven. Now biologists are forced to know uh, the command line, they are forced to learn Python, they are forced to learn how to uh, using R, how to use R, but they are forced to learn as users, not as developers. So who now develops those tools for these life scientists to use based on their demand, based on their data? That's where the, 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 the flow opens, the opportunity opens for data scientists to, to venture into this area. And uh, working with the molecular life scientists means to, to, to design, analyze, and interpret their experiments. Okay? When it comes to Africa, what are the ch data science challenges? which in a way we view it as an opportunity being an ai being in the ai community okay um the 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 the, the, the biological data in africa the african data is really underrepresented on that huge data set that i've mentioned being received at 30 terabytes and i forgot to mention that all those three the databases on those three biological centers of excellence are synchronized so whether you access the one in uh, europe or the one in us is the same data they're synchronized in real time okay so we have flora and fauna the flowers we have the plants and uh, livestock the data is underrepresented we have to deal with uh, an ever-increasing data size and complexity and uh, the challenges when it comes to IT or data science is the data transfer from generation site. Okay, data is generated in the in the lab. How do you transfer it to a, a steady data a, a, a steady um, uh, database server? What, the internet access. How reliable is it to operate on real time? to transfer the data and even people who are, 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 are pro, uh, who do access these databases it means the database servers have to run 24 7 you have to have adequate and team infrastructure for storage as well as processing you also have to have long-term secure storage and you also have to train people at different levels to use this how do you train biologists to use the data that their data that is stored? Okay, so these challenges on the other side is equally an opportunity for a data scientist to work on. Now the biggest challenge is that there are not enough bioinformaticians and data scientists. In Africa alone, there are hundred bioinformaticians, hundred African bioinformaticians. Half of them are in South Africa, the other half are in Kenya, I think. And uh, when we say there are 100, that means they are of African origin. But we understand majority work in the diaspora. So the number can be even be less than 100 in the whole, in the whole continent. 
and even data scientists. That's why we have all these movements. AI Saturdays, Black in AI, we have all these uh, data science in Africa to build the capacity in the continent to be able to cope with this ever-changing uh, technology and which also have high and very promising uh, uh, they, they are very promising in solving the socio-economic challenges when it comes to health and food security. So there are not enough bioinformaticians in Africa, there are not enough data scientists in Africa, and it's the case not only in Africa but the world as a whole. The metadata which is in, on the databases is not well curated, data quality and accuracy is, is not a high priority when it comes to those clinicians and some researchers, but when it comes to a data scientist, that's the work that is there. So, what's the data scientist challenge? Okay, we said it's highly inter interdisciplinary. Okay, you have your computer scientist, we have a statistician, the data scientist has to have computer science and statistics uh, background. A bioinformatician has to combine computer science with biology. Biostatistician has to combine uh, uh, bi biology and statistics. The superwoman here, yeah, the superman, the wonder woman, is the bioinformatician. Now, how do you combine all three? Okay, it's not an easy learning curve. It's a steep learning curve. We are here as data scientists now. How do we venture to work with biologists, okay? And how do we venture to, to work with biologists to make, uh, to be the superheroes in solving the world challenges of food security, to discover the drug discovery, personalized medicine, medicine they are all those um, opportunities. So as I said here, Earlier, bioinformatics are not enough. There is a knowledge gap, not only in Africa, but worldwide. That the amount of data is very high now, huge, but is hardly touched. Only the surface. Only this much has been analyzed till now. Until now. So, bioinformatics and wet, bi wet lab biologists operate in this region that we have very huge data sitting on those repositories and that's another reason they are all publicly available in order for people, more people, to have more people in the world work on them. But there's this knowledge gap and this is where we operate. We really want to achieve that of all this data, if all of it is analyzed, we, we will definitely have all, we'll have the data curve uh, aligned and the same slope as this what is known already but very little is known and this is the knowledge gap and this is what we have me and you to work on to be able to do all these discoveries through bioinformatics. So how is that data generated? The DNA sample is collected okay so with the next generation sequencing technologies these big companies Roche, Illumina, they have those nanopore, they have those equipment which do analyze uh, samples to generate data and then bioinformatician here does the analysis and says I found a match, that's a discovery okay so but what is DNA? For, we are data scientists, we have minimum knowledge of biology, but they are the basics. It's, a, it's an acid, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. The main thing for us, what we have to concern is that it contains genetic information, the hereditary information. And the, in the molecular biology, this is what happens, that the DNA is changed to RNA, a process called transcription and uh, the RNA which is also another acid which is involved in the protein synthesis through a process called translation and sometimes in transmission of uh, genetic information 
so this is actually the domain of molecular biologists and this is where the the, the bioinformatics work lies in and genomics so how 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 do you approach a bioinformatics uh, problem how do you approach the work okay it uh, we i defined earlier that bioinformatics is the field of science in which biology computer science and information technology merge to form a single discipline so as an example this is actually how it is done that you have a biological question okay for instance this on the right side is the is the is the example genes are regulated by protein x the, those are the ones you want to work on so you 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 get a sample of uh, you get a sample and you do the process earlier to generate data so the kind of data that's generated is called chipsec data chip sequencing data you translate now into a computer solvable task so you have the biological question you have the data translated now to a computer solvable task the computer solvable task will mean you align those uh, sequences and identify clusters in the genome clustering you know what we do our side clustering now you have the biological data clusters that means if you are able to cluster that data it means they have some common uh, they have some common uh, structure okay that will answer that biological question to do that to align now to align that to do the alignment you have to develop an algorithm that's all in a computer okay write the choose the data structures to use you implement the algorithm that means writing the source code and then you run the algorithm that means you align those now you do the alignment and then you condense now the result in human readable form so you write a script to summarize the results okay and then at the end you answer the biological question report the protein binding sites Therefore, you start with the biological question and you end up answering the biological question. But from number two up to number seven is all data. That's where the bioinformatics work comes in. So the three things you have to remember is that bioinformatics requires dedication and continuity. It doesn't have a smooth learning curve. That's one thing we have to be very true about it. And uh, the bioinformatics data analysis is a full research experiment itself. We get the most out of, the, of our research work if we work as an interdisciplinary research team throughout. So the scope of bioinformatics, it deals with mainly development of computational tools and databases and the application of these tools and databases in generating biological knowledge to better understand living systems so based on that scope we have software development and applied bioinformatics you see where the data scientist lies on the software development so that biologists biochemists statisticians can apply them the engineers computer scientists and database designers are the ones dealing with the software development so our work is that it as scientists is not to answer those biological questions okay our work mainly lies here okay applied bioinformatics when we look we equally work here because they have you have to teach there's a you have to teach the biologists how to use the tools so this is how the the major um, the major two major uh, scopes of bioinformatics are so as data scientists our focus mainly is to to to, to develop softwares that are robust that are robust there, because there, there is a, one of the challenges and say the data has grown so big tools are evolving daily so and the higher the highest demand is that they need robust tools which can work at high speed there are various domains within the bioinformatics genomics okay which deals with the genetics okay proteomics which deals with proteins biostatistics 
you, the, the statisticians who work on biological data, and uh, it needs a lot of the computational work, computational biology, that's where most of the data scientists work on, and database management systems, which deals with systemic biology, cheminformatics, all those are the various, uh, uh, various area, bioinformatics areas. So when you acquire bioinformatics skills, it means you learn how to store, retrieve biological information from the databases. You need that because you're developing your software based on biological data. So you need to have access to those data which are in the open uh, repositories. Retrieve and compare gene sequences. Those are some of the data. You have to be able to predict function of unknown genes or proteins search for previously known functions of a gene, compare data with other researchers, compile, distribute data for other researchers. How is that all achieved? Software development. Robust. That is reproducible. All these whole things involve software. And that is the, actually the eye of a data scientist. That should be that should be their approach that okay you need to retrieve and compare gene sequences it's not our work to know in detail what that gene does and uh, what is its impact but from a data science perspective is retrieve and compare how is that achieved for such huge data okay and um, they, you need uh, you have uh, the skills that you need to have to work in bioinformatics, but learning is continuous. It's not that you have to have these first and then venture into the field. No, learning is continuous. So you need some basic background in some aspects of molecular biology. Uh, you also have to be able to communicate biological comp uh, questions comprehensively to computer scientists thus and vice versa as a computer scientist you have to be able to communicate what your algorithm you have developed does to the biological uh, domain to the bi biology biologist uh, uh, to the biologist you also have to have thorough comprehension of the problem in the bioinformatics field so you have to have a basic background of molecular bio biology. Statistics is quite key, okay? And uh, you also have to, you also need to, to, to be able to filter, pass the data mangling and determine relationships between the data sets. Mathematics is quite a computational mathematics uh, for developing the algorithms which requires machine learning and deep learning and uh, in the past when the data size was small or if you're developing an algorithm that doesn't deal with huge data then you just use the normal programming languages but now with that uh, growth of data you really need uh, machine learning and deep learning knowledge engineering work and uh, engineering background is important and uh, engineering really works on those big companies who produce machines who, who manufacture machines that do the sequencing of this data that's where really the engineering is applied you need the good knowledge of a uh, few molecular software packages which exist so that you can build on yours that is more robust command line the linux is really the key operating system in bioinformatics database work that's where the data is stored and uh, all those uh, and this is uh, uh, sql and oracle are mainly relational databases now with uh, growth of data you need no sql uh, databases how do you deal with that computer programming skills and programming knowledge in python now you can really see on those skills required for bioinformatics that they, they, they are hardly the, the, the biology the biological skills are quite few you only just need to have a background in some aspects but you can see most of these requirements are all based on the data science domain and computer science domain so you have developed those tools 
where are they applied in, in the biology domain? These are some of those now biological uh, domains where those tools apply uh, in molecular modeling, in molecular modeling, you use those tools, bioinformatics, to predict the three-dimensional structure of proteins. Also, how do you predict protein function prediction? Molecular interaction, protein-to-protein -protein docking, finding inhibitors, okay? protein-DNA interaction, transcription uh, factors identification. Transcription is that change from DNA to RNA. So what do you identify the factors? Protein legal interaction. So these are application areas of those tools of bioinformatics. Evo evolution, how do you study evolution? That's the phylogenetic analysis. It also needs software tools. How do you track gene flow? Identification of conserved region, reconstruction of evol evolution history. How do you do that? That is all software development work and uh, data science uh, applications for predictions okay composition you are looking for prote protein sequence analysis signal peptide identification secondary structure analysis drug design when you are doing drug design that's another application area of bioinformatics you need to identify the targets how do you validate the target lead identification lead optimization okay and uh, the prediction so you see these words that these were the terms here of application area directly target directly identify that a data scientist is working in the bioinformatics dna sequence analysis when you do promoter analysis gene prediction regulatory elements okay primer designing Code and user optimization, okay? And when you are doing molecular dynamics uh, simulation, another application area, protein DNA simulation, protein ligand simulation, drug DNA simulation, swing medium. So bioinformatics is huge. It has huge application, uh, it has huge application and areas, and all these require software tools, okay? that are robust, that are reproducible to perform all these areas. So here I'm just giving you an example of Neil. He has done substantial work in computational biology, if you don't know. And uh, that was uh, quite, uh, it was quite in, in, in the past. He's uh, mainly now doing work in other areas. Uh, within the machine learning domain. However, he has done substantial work in computational biology. Just to mention, these are just talks that he has given. I haven't even touched the publications that he has done in computational biology. But he has worked with biologists in um, and where he, he, he worked as a data scientist. Now, he, this talk, he says, bridging the gap between computational biology and systems biology. And uh, another talk on uh, between systems and data-driven modeling for computational biology, target identification with Gaussian uh, processes. Okay, he did another work on Gaussian processes in computational biology a tutorial on multi-output Gaussian processes and mechanistic models. He also did uh, an introduction to systems biology from a machine learning uh, perspective. So he's a, he's a machine, he's a, one of the leading machine learning pioneers and he has done work in this domain. So this just gives you an appreciation of uh, that data scientists do work on, on, uh, on this domain. And uh, on my side, I can't uh, declare that um, I'm a guru in the area. I have ongoing work. I'm equally learning. Learning is continuous when you work in this work. I'm working on uh, development of a single sequence automatic assembly and analysis tool together with a master's student where we are working on to, 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 to understand that there have been a few attempts at building free open source software to, to dealing with the Sega sequence data 
uh, we have the Sanger sec in R, Sanger Sanger analyze R, okay, in a sub tool in Python. So our work with the I have a master student that we are working together in this. We are assess of the usability of these various software that already are out there. And uh, our goal is to develop a software that provides users with the ability to, 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 to efficiently and automatically handle large data sets uh, of these single sequence uh, data. And um, it's never too late to learn. These are the various sources. They, they have uh, the IMBO, the European Bioinformatics Institute, they, ha uh, they have uh, an online training and all are free, okay? There's this very nice reference which is interactive lessons in bioinformatics and introduction to applied bioinformatics. There's also uh, H3A Biomet which uh, is, a, is also a move, uh, is also a very huge project. Uh, with uh, for African universities, it has presence in almost all African countries. Okay, and uh, this GitHub link gives you a lot of resources and tools to direct you where you can. And there are these Twitter handles, uh, which provide great opportunities, which are there when it, in terms of training, in terms of job openings, which are there in the field for, for bioinformatics. So it's really for you and me to work hard to, to follow them. You get regular updates, they have PhD openings, workshop openings, they're very good resources uh, for you to follow. Thank you. I'm very grateful.